Hi guys, Dr. Anderson here. And uh, if you're new to our YouTube channel, uh, understand that I do these and I oftentimes am hiking on the weekends. So this is my outdoor setting. Uh, stopped by some ruins here along the trail. Uh, kind of pretty cute little place here, this old ranch. But um, I'm going to talk to you about restless legs. Uh, if you're new to this channel, understand that I uh, surgically reverse restless legs. Uh, I believe it's a mechanics, a mechanical thing. Uh, I believe that compression of nerve tunnels in the legs is a leading cause for many of you having restless legs. Because we've been reversing restless legs for close to 11 years now and have helped many, many people have a better night's sleep because of that. So we're going to talk about women and why you're twice as much more likely to have restless legs and why you're more likely to get during your pregnancy. And during pregnancy, it comes, it may come and then eventually go away, but it also could stick around afterwards and continue through the rest of your life. <clears throat> so let's talk about the difference between men and women and the way your legs are formed. And there is a difference. There definitely is. And I'll get into that detail in a minute. But before I do, let me explain some other anatomy that you need to understand as a basics before I get into the difference between the leg and the way the legs are built in men versus women. Okay, first off, when I do surgery, I'm opening up nerve tunnels, okay? These are tunnels between the knee and the ankle, and they become tight and they press on nerves. So let's, let's, let's kind of move on from there. The second thing you need to understand is the venous system, because when you, or I should say the, the circulatory system, when you pump blood out of the heart, it goes down to the foot, to your feet, through arteries. So those arteries have a high blood pressure system in them. The, the arteries are stiffer than veins. And those arteries are going through the same nerve tunnels that I'm opening in many cases. So in other words, the tunnel is tight and it's pressing on the nerves and nerves are more flexible, more compressible. But the arteries are not. So the compression of the tight nerve tunnel does not affect the artery very much, but it affects the nerve a lot. In that same neighborhood where that nerve tunnel is are veins. So think of it this way, the veins are very compressible. So what's happening if you have tight uh, nerve tunnels, blood's getting down to the foot just fine, no problem. It flows down with no resistance. As it's trying to go back up, it has to go through that that nerve tunnel area where there's pressure well the pressure is going to press on the veins more and that's what i think is happening you're getting blood buildup it's not huge blood eventually gets back up to your heart of course but it's just building up some little bit of pressure in your legs and that's causing some of your symptoms and that explains why you have to get up that's why you have to move that's why you have to walk that's why you might have to do squats like some of you say hey, there are all kinds of stories about well i got to get up i got to go do this i got to move I had one guy that I think he ran for two hours every day so he could sleep. I mean, he ran into exhaustion almost. But he, you all figure out eventually that getting up moving for most of you helps with your symptoms. Well, what's happening is when you move, those muscles are you know, that contract are pumping the blood back up to the heart. Okay? So now let's kind of go into the description of these leg uh these leg compartments. I got to explain this to you to now. So you all are built with leg compartments. We all are. And within these leg compartments, which are formed by fascial tissues, kind of like gristle, are muscles. And these are confined leg compartments. So each, each compartment has different muscle groups in them. When those muscles contract, that's what helps pump the blood back up to your heart. Okay. Now, women... We know for a fact that you have tighter fascial tissues that create these leg compartments than men. Men have more flexible uh, fascial tissues. Why? We have testosterone. That can create more muscle bulk. Okay? We might have bigger calf muscles because of our testosterone. You understand? So we have to have more flexible fascial tissue as we grow, develop, and work out, whatever, to accept for bigger muscle uh, bulk. Okay? And women have tighter fascial tissues for yet another function, and that has to do with pregnancy. We believe that, you know, when you're pregnant, having 
that increase uh, volume in your uterus, that area of your body, it's going to build a lot of pressure up in your veins. I think it's somewhere around three times the amount of pressure is in your fr veins for blood trying to get back up to the heart when you're pregnant versus not pregnant. So think of that. So that's going to really create a lot more backflow or back pressure and build up in your legs that you got to be able to pump that out. And that's why you have tighter fascial tissues. It creates a much more um, efficient, I guess you could say, uh, venous pump. When your muscles contract, they're really going to get that blood back up better because your fascial tissues are tighter. I hope that makes sense. So follow along with that. So that's why I think women... You are more prone to restless legs because I do think when we discover this and understand it better, we're not only going to find out that it's being, it's a problem putting pressure on the, on the nerves. And we can prove that because we have studies, uh, from patients showing before and after surgery, the nerve function in these patients is improved. We do intraoperative BMG. So we have data and other clinical evidence to show that nerves are working better before or after compared to before. But we don't have all the science yet. A lot of anecdotal, a lot of anecdotal information, which is what I'm kind of sharing with you. But I do think eventually we're going to find out that the problem with the restless legs there's a, a fairly good amount of it that's on the venous side. And so when I'm opening up the tunnels, that's really what I'm doing. I'm not just opening up the uh, nerve tunnels, but I'm also getting rid of the negative effects of that tight nerve tunnel and the tight fascial tissues on your veins. And I hope that makes sense. So that is why you women, <laughs> sorry, but you're twice as likely to, number one, get restless legs. And number two, you're going to have be more likely to get it during your pregnancy. So if you're here to the end, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate that because I think that gives you a really good basis of understanding. I have other videos on this too. I always love trying to explain it to patients. It's a challenge and I get excited because I really think uh, that's where this is going to go. We're really going to find out more and more as more research is done that that's the key thing with restless legs for many of you. So anyway, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We always appreciate your comments and anything else you want us to talk about. Uh, I'm game on. I love to talk about uh, the problems that you have with restless legs. And uh, I hope you have uh, a good day and uh, give us a like and we'll see you next time.